Welcome to the channel everybody. I appreciate you guys coming and checking it out. Thank you for all the new subscribers that have subscribed recently. I really appreciate your support. I hope you're enjoying the channel. I guess you wouldn't have subscribed if you didn't enjoy the channel, right? I mean, that just makes sense. Okay, so what we got going on today is I had a viewer give me a heads up about what he thinks is the very first encounter with the Bigfoot in the Southeast. Well, at least the very first one that was written down and they call the Bigfoot in the swamps in the southeast a skunk ape. So he believes this, this is the very first encounter of a skunk ape that is written down. Now I want you guys to decide whether this is a skunk ape or maybe something else like a giant or something like that. I'm not going to tell you what to believe, I'm just going to give you the story. So what I had to do was I had to contact the Connecticut State Library in they had to go into their archives and find this story for me and they emailed me this story and so I'm gonna give it to you guys now to set the story up this story occurs in, well before I do that I'm gonna tell you this is from the Connecticut Herald newspaper from February 3rd 1829 yes you heard me correctly 1829 way 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 back so this story has to be one of the very first encounter stories there is out there, I would assume. Now to set the story up, this story occurs in the Okefenokee Swamp. And for anybody that doesn't know the Okefenokee Swamp, well first of all, that translates into the land of the trembling earth. The Native American word is Okefenokee for the land of the trembling earth. Now the Okefenokee Swamp is located on the Georgia Florida border and it's a pretty big wilderness it's 38 miles long over 700 square miles or 438,000 acres and it is the biggest black water swamp in all of America it's 27,000 years old yeah you heard me correctly 27,000 years old that's pretty damn old if you ask me now a few more quick facts about the Okefenokee Swamp. It has 233 different types of birds in it. Yeah, that's a lot. Also, 49 different types of mammals. 64 different types of reptiles. 37 types of amphibians. And 39 fish. And 629, 621, pardon me, different types of plants in that swamp. So this swamp is, you know, a jewel that is down there on the Georgia-Florida line. And without further ado, I think we'll go ahead and get into this one. Now remember, the viewer thinks this is a skunk ape. I think it might be a giant, but I'm going to give it to you anyway, and we'll see what you guys think. Leave me some comments below and let me know what you think it is. So without further ado, how about we get into this one? Let's do it. There is a tradition among the Creek Indians that there is in the trackless gloom of the Okefenokee Swamp an island of enchanting beauty, more blissful than any place on earth. While it is generally thought that this murky fen, this black sea of the Avernus, containing nothing higher in the order of beings than countless swarms of mosquitoes, snakes, frogs, and alligators, the Indians say that in the terrestrial paradise on this island there dwells a race of mortals of superhuman dimensions and incomparable beauty. This island, though sometimes seen, is represented as inaccessible from the attributes which it possesses of locomotion, thus eluding approach, or from the ever varying labyrinths of fens and bogs by which it is entrenched in which the bold invader is confounded who ventures too near this enchanted spot. Thus lost in inextricable sloughs, a few intrepid hunters were once saved from perishing by a company of women from the island of surprising beauty, whom they denominated the Daughters of the Sun, or Children of the Great Spirit. Having kindly supplied them with refreshments and pointed out to them a way of retreat, they admonished them to fly for safety, for that their husbands were fierce men and cruel to strangers. This legend we have said regarded as fabulous, but Mr. John Oskin, residing on the borders of this swamp, 
in Ware County and some of his neighbors over the line in Florida have become satisfied from ocular reality and they so avere that it is mainly a matter of fact. We have their statement in writing tested by a respectable witness who has put the paper in our hand containing the following facts. We beg the gentleman's pardon, truce we should say. Not long ago, two men and a boy in the vicinity of the swamp like our friend Paul Pry had a curiosity to know, you know, what could be seen by two or three weeks pilgrimage into the accessible regions of this dismal empire. The season being unusually dry, they pushed their exploration far into the interior and at the end of the little more than two weeks found their progress suddenly arrested at the appearance of the print of a footstep. So unearthly in its dimensions, so ominous of power and terrible in form, that they were at once reminded of the legend we have mentioned above, and began seriously to apprehend its solemn reality. The length of the foot was 18 inches and the width 9 inches. The monster from every appearance must have moved forward in an easy or hesitating gait, his stride from heel to toe being a trifle over six feet in length. Our adventurers had seen enough and began to think of securing a retreat without waiting to salute his majesty, not doubting the other part of the story might also prove true of his fierceness and cruelty. They happily effected their escape, returned home, and related the history of their adventures, and what they had seen of the Man Mountain. A company of Florida hunters, half horse and half alligator, nine in number, determined a few months since to make this gentleman a visit, to ascertain if he had family and his manner of living. Following for some days the direction of their guide, they came at length upon the track first discovered, some vestiges of which still remaining. Pursuing these traces, several days longer, they came to a halt on a little eminence and determined to pitch their camp and refresh themselves for the day. The sound of their rifles as one or two of them were simultaneously discharging at an advancing and ferocious wild beast made the still solitudes of these dismal lakes reverberate with deafening roar. Echo beyond echo took up and prolonged this sound, which seemed to die away and revive in successful peals for several minutes. The sound had reached and startled from his lair the genius of the swamp, and the next minute he was full in their view, advancing upon them with a terrible look and a ferocious gait. Our little band instinctively gathered close in a body and presented their rifles and started shooting. The huge being, nothing daunted, bounded upon his victims and in the same instant received the contents of seven rifles. But he did not fall alone, nor until he had glutted his wrath with the death of five of them, which he did by wringing off their heads from their bodies. Wow, <laughs> that's crazy. Writhing and exhausted at length he fell, with his hapless prey beneath his grasp. The surviving four had opportunity to examine the dreadful being as he lay extended on the earth, some time wallowing and roaring. His length was 13 feet long and his breadth and volume of just proportions. Fearing lest the report of their rifles and the stentorian yells of the expiring giant should bring suddenly upon them the avengers of his blood, they betook themselves to flight, having first secured the rifles of their headless comrades and returned home with this count of their adventures. The story of the report, as related above, is matter of fact, and the truth of it is accredited, we are told, by persons living on the borders of the swamp and in this neighborhood of the surviving adventures. So there you guys go. The very first written down encounter of a skunk ape, or it might be a giant, 
Once again, you guys leave me comments below and let me know what you guys think it was. Do you guys think that was a tale about a giant? Or was it a skunk ape that they didn't know what it was? It was so huge and, you know, there was, wasn't was very many descriptions in it besides his size. Now, he had an 18-inch track, 9 inches wide. That's pretty big. 13 feet tall. I mean, that's massive. That's kind of like the video that I made the other day about that 12 to 13 foot tall Bigfoot in Washington State on Rattlesnake Ridge. You guys leave me some comments and let me know what you thought about this story. Now again, this was written up in 1829 and you can tell by the vernacular of the words that they were using back then that it was an old time account. And you know, I, pre I enjoyed reading this account to you guys actually. I like these old classical encounters better to be honest with you. Because, you know, why would they make this stuff up? I mean, they had nothing to gain, really, if you ask me. There's no social media. There's nobody paying them for their story. You know, they these guys were in the wilderness with their flintlock rifles and trying to explore the area. And once again, the Okefenokee Swamp. Imagine that place back then. Imagine how wild that place was. I mean, still even today it's wild. But imagine in 1829... How wild that was even the surrounding areas around it I mean couldn't have had very many people that was barely what like 50 60 years after the, the birth of our country before the Civil War so yeah this is a crazy story hope you guys enjoyed it if you did make sure you hit that like button and anybody that's new to the channel make sure you hit that subscribe button and also hit that notification bell for all notifications that way you guys won't miss out on any of the videos all right, I guess that's where we will leave it. Once again, always remember, where there is a will star, there is definitely a way. And we will see you guys later. Take care.